This teaching you're about to listen to was preached by Jagede Sunday E and recorded live at God's Family Bible Church, Trinidad. Jagede Sunday E is the general coordinator of Arabs of Revival Ministries and the School of Discipleship. He is also the missionary pastor of GFBC Trinidad under the leadership of Pastor Abology Akimbo, the general overseer of God's Family Bible Church Worldwide, Palm Coast, Florida. Listen and be transformed. So this morning, Lord, we ask, Lord, that as your word come, your word will minister salvation. Your word will minister victory. Your word will minister healing. Your word will minister deliverance. We ask Holy Spirit that you will open our heart of understanding. We will see Jesus lifted up. We will see Jesus glorified. Thank you, Father. And in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. If you are with me this morning, can you say louder? Amen. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please have your seat. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's nice to have you in the house of God this morning. This morning, I want to speak on what I call turning your sorrow into joy. Turning your pains into gains. How you can turn your trials in life, how you can turn it to testimonies. How you can turn your weeping to laughter. How you can turn your money to dancing. Somebody say, can I do that? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Now, this morning I wanted to understand these three basic truths in life. Now, it's so crucial, it's so important. There is nothing that set free as truths that you know. Truths that you believe. The truths that you act upon. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, the first thing I want you to know in life is that there is no situation, there is no condition in life that is permanent. Do you understand what I'm talking about? There is no situation, there is no condition that you find yourself, there is nothing that is happening to you now, there is nothing that you are going through or that you will ever go through that is not subject to a change. So everything is subject to change. I am in pain, that's subject to change. I have sorrow, that is subject to change. I have disappointment, that is subject to change. Things are not working well, that is subject to change. There is nothing in life that is not subject to a change. If you know how to produce the change, turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I want you to move fast with me this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I read verse 18. The Bible says, While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The Bible says, Whatsoever you can see, whatsoever you can feel, whatsoever you can touch, Whatever you can experience in this world, the Bible says they are temporary. They are not going to last forever. So, if you can see failure, the Bible says it will last forever. Things that are seen in life, the Bible says they are temporary. What is it that you see in your life and you are not pleased with it, you are not happy with it? What do you see in your family? You are not pleased with it. You are not happy with it. What do you see in your community? You are not happy with it. The Bible says they are temporary. So there is nothing in this life that is meant to last forever. Even your own life. Now right from the time you are born. Now listen to me. Right from the time you are born, you begin to change. Is that right? You are subject to change. This is not how you look two years ago, three years ago, seven years ago. You are changing. Everything in life is subject to change. Now, now, we have day, you have light. You have night, you have light. Darkness comes, light comes. Sun rises, sun sets. Nothing is constant. Even the heavens and the heart shall pass away. Revelation chapter 21 verse 1. He said, I saw a new heaven and a new heart. What happened to the first? He said, for the first heaven 
and the first hour they pass away and there was no more sin. Now, so this is the truth you need to know. Now, don't let the devil deceive you that the condition you are is permanent. No, nothing is allowed to be permanent. Now, the only thing that is permanent is God. Malachi chapter 2 verse 6, God said, I am God, I change it not. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 7, the Bible says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Matthew 24 verse 35, Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not go unfulfilled. Now, so it is only God, it is only Christ, it is only the word of the Lord that cannot change. So everything in life can change. Now, that should give you hope. That should give you joy. Oh, yes, this situation can change. Yes, it can change. Oh, I have been in this situation for a long time. That does not mean it cannot change. It is simply because you do not know how to produce that change. So I know whatever condition, whatever happened to me, is subject to change. That gives me hope. So I need to find out how do I bring about a change in my life? How do I bring about a change in the life of my children? How do I bring about a change in my relationship, in my marriage? How do I bring about a change in my academics? How do I bring about a change in my business? That's the number one thing you need to know, that there is nothing in life that is not subject to change. Only God cannot change. Only his word cannot change. But every other thing can change. Number two, the second truth I wanted to know in life is that with God, there is no hopeless situation. With God, as far as God is concerned, when God is involved, there is nothing that is hard or difficult. Oh, this is hard. This is difficult. I don't know how to do it. Nobody can help me. Now listen to me. Bring God into it. With God, nothing is impossible. Can you turn with me to the book of Mark chapter 10 verse 27? Number one, everything in life is subject to change. Whatever you are going through can change. Number two, with God there is no close case. With God there is no hopeless condition or situation. Nothing beyond God's power. There is nothing greater than his power, his ability. There is nothing that God cannot handle. Mark chapter 10. Mark, gospel according to St. Mark chapter 10. Look at verse 27. Mark chapter 10 verse 27. This is Jesus speaking. But Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible. But not with God. There are some things in life that are impossible with you. No matter how hard you try it, it may not work. Take for instance, no matter how hard you try, if somebody does not love you, he does not love you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You see some, some ladies, some, some women, they go out of their way, do everything, sacrifice everything, offer themselves to a guy, and yet... The guy is cheating on them. The guy does not love in return. You can't do that. You can't change somebody's heart. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So that is something that I cannot do. Because I'm human. I'm limited. But listen to me. There is a God that there is nothing that is impossible with him. Now, this is a truth you will never forget. That you should never forget in your life. It will give you hope. It will give you joy. It gives you comfort. That okay, I can't undo this situation. I have tried my best. But it seems as if my best is not working well. My best is not giving me a desired result. Then bring God into it. Because with him, there is nothing that is impossible. Jesus said, with men, this is impossible. There are some things you cannot fix. There are some things your parent cannot fix. There are some things that the doctor cannot fix. Do you understand? There are things in life that money cannot fix. There are things in life that influence cannot fix. There are things in life that no matter who you know cannot fix. But with God, with God, nothing is impossible. Now look at what he said further. He said, for with God all things. How many things? Come on, talk to me. How many things? Ten. 20,000, how many? Hall. Hall means hall. Nothing is left out. Hall inclusive. Now, look at, look at how Jesus put it again in the book of Luke chapter 18. 
Luke chapter 18, verse 27. Luke chapter 18, verse 27. But he said, The things which are impossible with men, there are things you want people to do for you. They really love to do it, but they cannot do it. The Bible says, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Things which are impossible for you. Things which are impossible for your friends to do for you. Things which are impossible for your lover to do for you. Things which are impossible for your husband to do for you. Things which are impossible for your parents to do for you. With God. The Bible says, they are possible with God. Possible with God. At times, I used to tell my little daughter, you know, when she asked me something, I said, sorry, I can't do that. He said, but why can't you do it? I said, because I'm a woman. There are things I cannot do. Now, I'm trying to let her know that there's only one person to look up to in life. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The greatest mistake you can ever make in life. You know, you set yourself for frustration, for disappointment, when you put all your hope, all your trust, all your confidence in any person. Do you understand what I'm talking about? No matter how nice, how good, how kind, how sincere that person is, there are some things he cannot do for you. There are some things. So these are things that you need to know in life. Oh, my mom loved me. She will do everything. That's right. But there are some things she cannot do, no matter how hard she tries. So it is only with God that there is nothing that is difficult or impossible. So number one thing I said, that you need to know that everything in life is subject to change. Number two, you need to know that all situations are possible with God. No hopeless situation with it. He can fix anything. He can straighten out anything. He can attend to anything. He can heal any sickness. He can do anything. So God can handle any situation in life. Number three, the third tool I want you to know, which is very crucial, very important, is that if you know God can do all things, if you know with God all things are possible, God will never do anything without your cooperation in your life. Now, this is where people mix it. They say, well, if God wants, God can do it. Yes, God always wants to help us. But listen to me, God will not help you against your will. Now, so, I want God to do things that I cannot do. That's right. God can do it. God is willing to do it. But there are some things that you also need to do. There are some repositioning you need to do. There is always a role to play in God changing my life and situation. And that's what I want to show you this morning. That's, that's actually where I'm going this morning. But I want you to know that your situation can change. Whatever is giving you concern is subject to change. It can change. Your life can get better. Things can work for you. Things can change for you. Where you have sorrow before you can have joy. Where you have pain before you can have gain. Where you have defeat before you can have victory. Where you have failed before you can succeed. You say, but I have tried. Yes, God can do it for you. But listen to me. God will not do it without your cooperation. In other words, God will not bypass me in working in my life. God will not force any change on my life. Matthew chapter 8, verse 1, a leper came to Jesus. You know, in those days, lepers are not allowed to stay with them people. You understand? They have their colony, they stay in their car. And this guy just left the car and said, No, I want to be here. I want my skin to be fresh. I want to be made up. And then he went to Jesus, and then he told Jesus, He said, Jesus, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Do you know the message Jesus said, I am willing to be clean. Now, so God is always willing to help. God is always willing to change our life. If it is giving you pain, believe me, God is willing to help you change the situation. If you are not happy with your presence here, believe me, God is willing to produce that change in your life. God is willing to give you what you have desire. But the issue is this, as great as God is, as mighty as God is, as powerful as God is, God has a principle. And the principle is that I will not do anything without you agreeing and cooperating with me. That's God's principle. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, so, what do I need to do to turn my sorrow into joy? That's why I say you can do something about it. Because you already have a willing partner. That is God. 
Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, so all that you need to do is just to partner with God. It's just to do your own little role, what you can do, and leave the rest of God. He will do what He alone can do. But listen to me, if there are things that I can do, and I don't do it, and I say, God, do everything, God will say, no, I am God. I only specialize in doing what men cannot do. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Hello? Amen. The Bible says, what is impossible with men is possible with God. In other words, that which is possible with men, God will lead men to do it. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Okay. Now, so, it is only what is impossible. It is only what I cannot do. It is only what I cannot handle. Then God will say, leave that to me. That's why I'm God. That's why I'm a big God. I can handle that. But if I can handle it, God will let me handle it. Now, so, in producing a change in your life, in your situation, you need to identify things that you need to do so that God will do what he needs to do for a change in your life and situation. Are you with me this morning? Yes. All right. So let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 15. I want to show you a situation in the Bible and how a change was produced. How they brought about a change. What they did to get a change. And that is exactly what everyone that needs a change in life needs to do. We just learn from that and then we pray. Exodus chapter 15. Exodus is the second book of the Bible. So start from the beginning. After Genesis, you'll find yourself in Exodus. Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. I read from verse 20. The Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took the timbre in her hand. And all the women went out after her with timbres and with dances. Verse 21. And Miriam answered them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. Verse 22 now. Take note of this. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. They went out into the wilderness of Shaul. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Verse 23 now. Now when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara, verse 24. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Verse 25. I'm going to stop there for now. So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the water, the waters were made sweet. The water was bitter before, but when he cast the tree there, there was a chain. The waters were made sweet. There he made a statue and an ordinance for them. And there he tested them. Now let me give you a background of what has happened here. Now the children of Israel, they were in Egypt for over 400 years. They were slaves there. And so they kept crying to the Lord for deliverance. And so God sent a man called Moses. And God used this guy, this, this prophet, to deliver them. To bring them out of that bondage. And so they came out of the bondage. And while they were going to the land that God has promised them, God said, I will give you a promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, the Egyptians' army began to pursue after them. And so they, 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 they caught up with them right before the Red Sea. Now listen to this. When the children of Israel left Egypt, the Bible says in uh, chapter 13, when you read Exodus chapter 13, let me quickly read that to you from verse 21. The Bible says, when they left Egypt, the Lord went before them by day. The Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so as to go by day and night. Verse 22, it did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Now, it's good for you to note that it wasn't as if God just brought them out and God left them to whatever happened. No. God was actually with them. The Bible says he never took away from them his presence. There was always a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. So God was always with them. Now, so God divided the Red Sea. Their enemies perished in the Red Sea. So they had victory. And that was why they sang. So they sang the song of victory, the song of thanksgiving to God. But right immediately after that, as they progress in their journey, they find themselves in a terrible situation. Listen to what happened. The Bible said for three days, they were walking in the wilderness, they had no water to drink. 
How many of us have tried one day without water? Two days without water? Three days without water? How thirsty could you be? You'll be very, very thirsty. Is that right? You'll be dry. Be hydrated. You need water. What matters most is let me have water to drink. So these people, about a million people, were in the wilderness for three days looking for water desperately. They were tested. They, they were searching everywhere for water. Listen to what happened. At last, they got to a place and they found water. And when they said, oh, praise the Lord, at last we've got water. And so they made an attempt to drink, but they were highly disappointed. They couldn't drink the water. The water, the Bible says, was bitter water. Now, now, now I want you to, to imagine such a disappointment. You've been looking for something. You've been praying for something. You've been fasting for it. You've been asking God for it. And at last, it, it appears you find it. But when you take it off, that is not exactly what you want. There's nothing that could be as disappointing as that. Do you understand what I'm talking about? There's nothing that could be as frustrating as that. Let, 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 let me picture it this way. Look at it. Maybe a lady that's 30, 40 years asking the Lord for, for a husband. Asking the Lord for a partner, for a companion. And then a guy woke up to you and said, I love you. I want to marry you. You look beautiful. And say, oh yes, I've been asking, I've been waiting. This is what I've been waiting for. For three weeks, three months, you realize that this guy is devil in <laughs> You know, that could be very disappointing. You know, that could be very frustrating. Now, that's exactly what happened to these guys. For three days in the wilderness, they were looking for water. At last, they find water. If they had not found water, maybe they could still enjoy it. But, you know, when you are really hungry, and then, they, and then you go to a place and then they offer you Chinese stuff. You, you, you know those Chinese, Chinese stuff and you have chicken and then you sit and say, wow, now I can do justice to this. And you take a bite, it was terrible, it was bitter. You can't even swallow it. Nothing could be as painful as that. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Nothing could be as, as frustrating. Nothing could, could provoke you to hunger as that. Now, so this is the situation they find themselves. It was a painful situation. They were disappointed. They had sorrow. They had pain. They had anger. They had been waiting for it. It came. It wasn't exactly what they wanted. They couldn't do anything with it. It was a terrible, disappointing, frustration, frustrating situation. It was a real challenge for them. Now listen, listen to this. Do you know that in life, if you live long in life, you will experience such. Nobody is exempted from it. Nobody has immunity in life from pain. You understand what I'm talking about? Nobody has immunity in life from disappointment. Now, you may try your best, but listen to me, in life. That's why Jesus said in John 16, 3, he said, in me you will have joy, but in the world you will have tribulation. Now, there will be a moment of disappointment. There will be a moment of heartache, betrayal, your best friend, your lover, your boyfriend, someone that you love, walk out on you, betray you, leave you for another. Now, that is part of the experience of human being in life. No one is immune against that. No one is exempt. Oh, I am a Christian. I am praying. I am fasting. Listen to me. That does not exempt you from the challenges of life. It will always come. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Everyone will go through that. It is part of life. It is part of our experience in life. Now, but when you get to such a junction in your life, when you come in contact, when you are face to face with a situation that is, that is very disappointing, that is frustrating, when you find yourself in a place and you are face to face with sorrow, face to face with pain, face to face with betrayal, with disappointment, with agony, what do you do? How do you bring a change? Sadly, there are so many people, they've experienced such disappointment in life. But listen to me, they are stuck there. God does not want you to be stuck there. There are still better days ahead. You can change the situation. And that's what I want to show you. Now, these people, they were not stuck here. They got here. They experienced this bitter water. They had this terrible experience. But listen to me, they did not stop that. And God does not want you also to stop there. I was talking to a lady some times ago, and I said, 
You know, actually, I went to a house and I was saying, you're getting old, though you still look beautiful. I said, you need a man. He said, no, I have my boy. I said, that's your boy. You just said, that's your child. That's not your husband. The father that two of you are staying together, that does not make him your husband. You need a man in your life. He said, oh, no, pastor, you don't understand. I've suffered from men. I said, that's it. Everybody has. And then I open up my mouth and I share with him a bit of my own bitterness in life. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You know, a bit of what I've also gone, gone through in life. I said, if I don't tell you, you will know. So everyone has a share of pains in life. Do you understand what I'm talking about? But I said, I need to get stopped there. So why will you be stopped there? A guy walk out on you, fine. Now move on. That does not mean the next guy will walk out on you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? God does not want you to be stopped at your bitter water. Now, you have it. You can get there. Everyone can get to that point in life where your experience is just bitter. It's just terrible. Do you understand? You wake up in the morning and it's like you should go back to bed because you don't even want to see anybody. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You don't want to talk to anybody. I don't know whether you have been there. That you just want to be left alone. You just wish that you are the only one in the world. No, you are not. It's not a peculiar aspect. The Bible says no temptation, no trial has ever happened to you except that which is common to man. Do you understand? If somebody tells you, oh, look at what has happened, it has not happened to anybody. That's a lie. Terrible thing. Worse thing than that has happened to people before. So, but I want you to know that you can change that. No matter how bad, how terrible, how painful, how disappointing, how frustrating a situation is, you can change it. And that's what I want to show you. How do I change it? I don't like this bitter water. The Bible said they got to a place, it was called Mara. The water was bitter. But I just read to you that they changed it to a sweet water. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You can change your bitter experience to a sweet experience. You can. You can change your sorrow into joy. You can. You can change your pain to gain. You can. You can change your trials in life, your tribulations in life. You can turn it around to testimony. You can. Your disappointment in life, you can make it another appointment in life. You can. You can change it. You can turn bitter situation to a sweet situation. So how did they change? How did they turn the bitter water, the bitter experience, the bitter situation they find themselves? How did they change it to a sweet water? Look at what the Bible said. The Bible said they changed it. It became sweet. They didn't leave it bitter. They didn't drink it like that bitter. Hello? Are you with me? Did they drink bitter water? No. They only tasted it. God does not want you all your life to drink bitterness, to drink sorrow. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, there's nothing wrong in having a taste, but you can change it. You can. There are so many people in life that they just say, there, yeah, oh, this water is bitter, and they keep drinking it. <laughs> Thank God these guys are smart. They spit it out. They say, no, 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 we don't want it. This is not what we want. God is with us. God should be able to do something better than this. Hello? Now, I want you to know that God is with you. The Bible says God never left them alone. He was with them. So this guy said, if God is with us, if God is here, no, we can't be drinking bitter water. Hello? That's how you should think. If God is with me, the Bible said, God is for you. Hallelujah. God is with you. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5, God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So if God is with me, then I need to tell myself the truth. Then I can't be going through this. I can't stay here in life. I can't be drinking this sorrow. I can't die of this sickness. I can't be poor in life. Failure should not be my regular experience in life. That's the way God wants you to think. You may have a taste of it, but don't drink it. Don't swallow it. Are you listening to me? Spit it out. Say, Lord, no, no, no. We need to change this. This is not what I want in life. This should not be my lifestyle. Failure, sorrow should not be my lifestyle. It has to change. And when you say, Lord, I want to change, God will say, yes, that's why I'm here. And God will begin to show you what you need to do. So, what are the things you need to do if you want to change a bitter situation, a bitter experience in your life to a sweet one? Let's look at these guys, what they did. Number one, verse 24. Exodus 15, verse 24. Let me say this quickly. This is what you must never do. And the Bible says, the people complain against Moses. They blame Moses. They put the fault on Moses. Now listen to me. If you want a change in life, in your life, in your situation, 
One of the things you must never, never, never do in your life, you know what it is? Never blame anyone for your situation. Never. Never complain against you. Know, if not for that guy that left me, if not for that lady that was more beautiful than me, my husband wouldn't have left me. No, friend. Don't blame anyone. These people, the Bible said, they blame Moses. They complain against Moses. You brought us to this Mara water. You brought us to this bitter water. So they complain. I checked the word complaints in the dictionary yesterday. It means a repeated cries of anger, rage. That's what it's called. You know, expression of displeasure. Complain that you are just making noise or raging. <laughs> That's what it means to complain. Now listen to me. One of the things that complaining or murmuring or looking for someone to blame for your life, for your bitter situation will do, do you know what it will do? It will get you stuck there. It will get you stuck. It won't bring any change. Murmuring does not produce any change. Complaining does not produce any change. Looking for someone to blame, looking for someone to hold responsible for your situation, for your life, it's not going to help you there. It's not going to change anything either. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It's going to get you stuck. It's going to get the situation worse. And you know what it will also do? It will also keep God far away. God hates murmuring. God hates complaints. Why do you want to murmur and complain when you can pray? Rather than looking for someone to blame, why not cry to God with whom all things are possible? Okay? So these guys... They are dumb. They are not smart. So they blame their leader. This was the guy that God used to deliver them from slavery for over 400 years. And they blame him. Why did you bring us to this bitter water? They complain. But thank God Moses was smarter than all of them. Look at what he did. And that is the first thing you need to do. And the Bible says verse 25. Look at Exodus 15 verse 25. Look at Moses. So they complain against Moses. They put all the fault on him. They blame him. But he did something. And the Bible says, so he cried. That is, Moses cried out to the Lord. That means prayer. Moses did not murmur. Moses did not complain. Moses did not look for someone else to pray. Do you know what Moses did? He prayed. He cried to God. I want to change him and I pray. Somebody just break your heart. Pray. Somebody just disappoint you. Pray. You just experience failure. Break. You just have a taste of your own bitter experience in life. Now listen to me. Don't be bitter. Don't murmur. Don't complain. Don't worry. Pray. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. The Bible says, Ask and it shall be given to you. Verse 8 says, For he who asks, receives. Are you listening to me? So it is those who ask that receive. Oh God, I don't like this bitter water. I've had a taste, but Lord, I don't want to drink it. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? That is what brings you joy. That's the first thing you need to do. Don't murmur. Don't complain. Don't look for someone to blame. Pray. Cry to God. Talk with me to James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Verse 13. Pray. The Bible did not say he will complain and receive. No. He said he will ask. He will pray. Receive. Not he will murmur. Not he will complain. It is he who prays. What are you going through? You are not pleased with it? Now listen to me. Don't be depressed. Don't be discouraged. Don't be sad. Don't blame the whole world for it. Don't blame the government. Pray. Cry out to God. That is a God that can fix any situation. Talk to him about it. Cry to him. Lord, I need healing. Look at James chapter 5 verse 13. James chapter 5 verse 13. Look at what the Bible says you should do. If you are suffering, if you have problem, you have situation... If there is something bothering your heart, don't murmur, don't complain, don't be worried, don't be angry, don't look for someone to blame. James chapter 5 verse 13, are you with me there? Okay, look at what verse 13 says. Is anyone among you suffering? Is anyone going through hard time? Is anyone by his own mara? Is anyone having bitter experience and bitter water? What should he do? Are we on the same page? Pray. Mama? Pray. Complain? Pray. Blame someone? Pray. Come on, talk to me. Pray. Pray. That's what God said you should do. Is anyone suffering? Pray. Weep sad? No. Pray. Has someone broken your heart? Don't weep, don't cry. Pray. 
Your friends, your best friends, stab you. Behind, pray. Someone just backbite about you, pray. You just had some terrible things some people said about you. Pray. Don't murmur, don't fight back, don't complain. Don't pay evil for evil. The Bible says, pray. Turn your attention to God, that's what it means. Do you know what prayer will do to you? It will bring God's intervention to the matter. Now, when I pray, what I'm saying is that, Lord, we are partners in this now. That's what I pray. Prayer and this God's support. That's what prayer does. Prayer brings God's intervention. Prayer brings God's help. What prayer does is that prayers bring God into your situation. Turn with me to Psalm chapter 50. Psalm chapter 50. Now, when you murmur, when you complain, you have not brought God into your matter. You have not brought God into your situation. You are just worsening the matter. But when you pray, when you begin to say, Lord, help me. Do you know what you are doing? You are saying, God, step into this matter. Fight my battle. Defend me. Give me justice. That's what you are saying. Yes, somebody say, how do I, how do I pray? How do, I, how do I know what to say? In the moment when I'm sorrowful. In the moment when I, I just had a taste of bitter water. In a moment when I just have a taste of betrayal, a taste of disappointment. How do I pray? I don't even know. No, you don't need to say long prayer. <laughs> Hello? God help me. That's enough. <laughs> just cry to God. The Bible says, Moses, cry out to God. Lord, help us. We don't want to drink this bitter water. That's all he said. That's it. Look at what Psalm 50 says. Psalm 50. The book of Psalm chapter 50. Are you there? Let's look at it from verse 14. Psalm 50 from verse 14. The Bible says, offer to God thanksgiving. That's part of prayer. Offer to God thanksgiving. Not at the moment and complaining. Thank God for everything. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18, the Bible says this is the will of God in Christ Jesus that you give thanks in everything. Hello? The Bible says give thanks in everything. You are just by the bitter water. The water is bitter, but at least thank God that there is still water. Thank God. Thank God. Somebody came to you and said, I love you, and then the next moment you have seen his back. He, he has turned his back. Thank God. At least somebody walk up to you and say, I love you. <laughs> Do you know there are some people that nobody even come around and say, I love you? Thank God. Whatever the situation, you can always thank God for. There's always something. If you are smart, there's always something to thank God for. So that's why the Bible says, in everything, give thanks. Offer thanksgiving to God. Say, Lord, I thank you. It could have been worse than this. But Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Lord, because it is not beyond you. As for me, I cannot fix it. But I thank you because the Bible says, that which is impossible for me is possible with God. You can thank God for that. For you, it seems to be an hopeless situation. But for God... Nothing is hopeless. There's no hopeless situation. So the Bible says, offer to God thanksgiving. Look at verse 15 now. Huh? And God said, then call upon me in the day of trouble. Rather than murmuring and complaining, God said, call, call, call. Pray. Prayer is making a call to God. Prayer is making an emergency call. Do you know that on your phone, look at your phone, you know, guys, that even if you don't have credit, you can still make an emergency call. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? A distress call? So God, that's it. You don't need to know many scriptures. You don't need to know Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Call upon God. Cry. That's an emergency call. Cry in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, John 14 verse 14, Whatsoever you ask in my name, I will, I will do it. Ask in my name. Pray. Lord, help me in the name of Jesus. God has had. God will step into the matter. God, defend me. That's enough. God will do that. God, take justice for me. God will do that. So, look at what God says. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you. And you shall glorify me. So, prayer brings God's deliverance. So, when I pray, God steps into the situation. And that's the beginning of a change. Are you listening to me this morning? So, no matter the bitter water that you are tasting now, no matter how the situation seems to be, no matter how hopeless it looks to you, no matter how frustrating, disappointing, or terrible it may seem, listen to me, when you call upon God, when you pray, when you cry to God, rather than murmuring, rather than complaining, listen to me, you are setting up the situation for a change. God will step in it. God say, I will 
deliver you. I will answer you. Hallelujah. Those who ask, they receive. Those who call upon God, God answer them. Now, so the first thing I need to do is not to murmur, it's not to complain when I have a taste of bitter water. What I need to do is to still thank God for it, that at least it is still water. And then call upon God for a change. Now, look at what happened. Now, when you pray, now, this is very important. For those of you who, who are the Bible study, you know, last week you understand it. Now, when you pray, I said, don't just pray and say, thank you in Jesus' name, amen, and walk away. Sit there and listen to what God has to say. Habakkuk chapter 2. The guy said, I will climb upon the tower and I will watch to see what the Lord will say. Now, so many of us, the reason why we don't have a change, despite the fact that we pray, is because we just pray and then we say, it's over, God will do it. No, God works in partnership with us. So there are still something that God will have to say to you. There are things that God will still have you to do. So when I pray, I don't just leave and say, I have prayed. Now listen to me. Prayer is not one way to talk to God. Prayer is a communication with God. What do I mean by communication? You speak and you listen. And when I speak, you listen as well. So prayer is not just shouting and talking and crying to God. It's good to do that. Tell God what you want. But pay attention to what God also has to say. So many times we pray, but we don't wait for answer to our prayer. Do you know why? Because we don't listen to what God has to say. Now, so look at what happened here. Exodus 15. Look at that verse 25 very well. Moses is a smart guy. So when he prayed, he waited. Just like Abacock said in Abacock 2. So when you pray, when you cry to God for a change, listen, pay attention to what God has to show you or to what God has to say to you. God will speak. God is not a dumb God. Are you listening to me? When you pray, God also speak. God wants to speak to you. So, verse 25. So, he prayed. He cried out to God. He called upon God. He didn't join those people that were complaining. Others were complaining. But Moses said, I know complaining is not going to fix the situation. I will pray. And so, he prayed. But he didn't stop there. Now, listen to what happened then. And the Lord show him a tree. Hallelujah. Now this is, this is awesome. The Lord show him a tree. So when he prayed, he was waiting for God. He was paying attention. What will God say? What will God show to him? And God said, this is the solution, Moses. Now, there is a tree just right there. Right there. Not too far. So close to you. Just go and take that tree and dip it in the water. Now, imagine if he had prayed and he didn't waste for God's instruction. When the water changes, no, it won't change. If we continue to pray, the people will continue to complain. Many of all, that's what we do. We continue to pray. Some continue to complain, but the situation did not change. Why? Because God is giving instruction, and we are not paying attention. We are not listening. Now, so God wants you to listen. And this is very important because this is God's general solution. This is what God always say, what God always do, what God always show. When anyone cry to him for a change, God will always point you to a tree. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? What kind of a tree is that? When you have by your bitter water, and you have a taste of your bitter water, and you say, Lord, I can't drink this bitter water. I know you can fix it. You can do something. You can change it. God will say, yes, I do. And then you say, Lord, how do you want to do it? God will point you to a tree. And God will say, you take that tree, put it in your situation. Bring that tree to yourself. So what is the tree? How do I bring that tree into my situation? Hallelujah. Now, I want you to follow me to the book of Galatians chapter 3. The book of Galatians chapter 3. Now, this is, this is where I am going. I don't want you to miss it. Stay with me. Be alert. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Hallelujah. When you want a change in your life, God will point out a tree to you. God will refer you to a tree. God will show you a tree. God will point a tree to you. And what you do with that tree will determine whether your situation will change or not. Are you listening to me? What you do with the tree that God refer you to. What you do with the tree that God points out to you, that determines whether the situation will change or not. So it is not crying, it is not complaining. Are you listening to me? It is what I do with the tree that God showed to me. 
So Moses tried, God revealed a tree, God showed him a tree, God points a tree to him. And what he does with that tree is what determines whether there is a change or not. And the same thing goes for us today. Galatians chapter 3 from verse 13. The Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the Lord, having become a cause for all, for it is written, cause is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, please look up. Now, stay with me this morning. This is, this is where I'm going. Once you get this, then we'll rise up to pray. Moses and the people came to the bitter water. Alright? They had a taste of it. People were complaining, but Moses was wiser than them. He cried to God. Now, when he cried to God, God did not do magic. Hello? Did he do magic? Did he say abracadabra and then water change? No. I mean, of all, that is what we expect God to do. Magic. No. God does miracles, not magic. Miracles and at least your partnership, you do something. And you listen to what I'm talking about. Now, this, this is where many Christians listen. But I pray God is not answering. No, you are not listening. You are not doing what God is saying that you should do. When I pray, I wait for God for instruction. And you listen to what I'm talking about. So, Moses prayed. Moses prayed. And then said, Lord, change the bitter water. Then God said, you have to do something. And what God did was that God showed him a tree. God said, go take that tree. Bring that tree into the water. And when you do that, you don't even need to pray. You don't need to shout. You don't need to cry. And you listen to what I'm talking And the Bible said, he did just that. And when he took the tree and he put it in the water, the sweet water, then the bitter water, became sweet. And you listen to what I'm talking about. Now, that is what God also going for the life. When you are by your own bitter water, and you're having a taste of bitterness, a taste of sorrow, a taste of pain, a taste of betrayal, a taste of disappointment in life. And then you cry, you pray to God. This is exactly what God will also have you to do. God will show you a tree. And God expects you to take that tree and bring it into your situation. And listen to me, that is what will change your sorrow into joy. That is what will change your pain into gain. So the question is, what is that tree? Are you with me this morning? Now, the only tree that God always refers, everyone that wants God to produce a change in their life is Christ on the cross. Jesus was hanged on the cross. That's the tree. Now, so anytime I cry to God, and you listen to me, I need healing, I need victory, I need deliverance, I need success, I need prosperity, I need breakthrough, I need a husband. God will say, look at my son on the cross. Look at Jesus on the tree. God always points us to Jesus. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Do you know why? Because the Bible says, Titus 2.11, that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Everything that God wants to give all mankind, he has given it to us when he put Jesus on the cross. There is something else that God will do. There is no other miracles he wants to perform than that. So everything comes from him that was hanged on the tree. That's why God tells us, look at the tree. Now, God is using that as a visual representation of a time when Jesus will come and God will be pointing all mankind out, whatever the problem, whatever the situation, God will always point us to Jesus and what he did for us. No matter what you want in your life, listen to me. God has put everything in His Son when He put Him on the cross. That's why Jesus, John 19 30, He said it is finished when He died on the cross. So, everything that God wants to do, God will first of all want you to have a revelation of Jesus on the tree. Now, why is that so important? Do you know why it's so important? It is because that is where God's law is revealed to us. If I can understand that. So, when my lover betrayed me, walk out on me, dump me for another, and you listen to me, and I'm crying, I say, Lord, look at my life. 
Nobody wants me. My heart is shattered. My heart is broken. Then God will say, look at Jesus on the cross. I love you. That's why I died for you. That's why Jesus died for you. Now, if you can catch that in revelation of love, the Bible says in Romans 5, 8, that God demonstrated his love to us. When we were sinners, Christ died for us. First John chapter 4, verse 9, the Bible says, in this is love, not that we love God, but God loves us, and he sent his son as a propitiation, as a sacrifice for our sin. Jesus said, no greater love has any man than this, that a man will lay down his life for his friend. Now, so if everyone hates me, betray me, disappoint me, if I can understand, if I can look up to the cross and I see how much God loves me, that will heal your heart. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Now, so God wants everyone, no matter what I'm going to, if I can trust you. I have sorrow, I have pain. Do you know what God do? Look at the cross. He said, but why do I look at the cross? The cross, the tree of the cross, is a place where a divine exchange took place. What divine exchange? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. But look at what the Bible says, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1. The Bible says, God made him. Now, turn the Bible there, look, check it out. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. The Bible says, God made him who knew no sin to be seen for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. Now, this is what happened on the tree. And this is why God always referred them to the tree. Look up, see what happened on the tree. Now, God put Jesus on the tree to die for you in a chain for our own life. That's what God did. Now, we were sinners. Is that right? We were born as a sinner. We never kept the law of God. We broke the law of God. We were bad. We are terrible. We are the ones that are supposed to die for our sin. Is that right? Are you with me this morning? Now, we are the ones who are supposed to die. But Jesus came and he lived a sinless, perfect, and righteous life. They brought people to witness against him. They find nothing. Why they said, I find nothing in this man. This guy is innocent. But yet, he died on the cross. Now, that was what God wanted. It was an exchange. I was supposed to be the one to die on the cross. But God said, no, don't worry. I love you so much. I don't want you to die. I'll put my son there to die for you so that you can live and enjoy the blessing. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Now, so, everything that Jesus did on the cross, it was meant to be an exchange for my life. Okay? The Bible said, Matthew 8, 17, Matthew 8, 17, he took our infirmity and he bore our sickness. Now, now, so, Jesus on the tree took my sickness, he took my disease, he took my infirmity. What should I take? Health, healing. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That's a change. So when I am in sickness, when I'm in pain, in agony, and I said, Lord, I need healing, change me. God will say, look at Jesus. That is where it happened. About 2,000 years ago, he took your sickness, he took your disease, so that you can have healing, so that you can have health, so that you can have strength. So what you do with that, that will determine whether you have healing. God wanted to see that that is, that is why God always refers us to the cross. Because that is where God did everything for us. That is where the exchange took place. That is where God took what we should have, the sickness, the pain, the cough, and he put it on his son. And he put the blessings of his son, he put it on our lives. Look at Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah, look at Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 53. Look at verse 4. Isaiah chapter 53, 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 verse 4. The Bible says, Surely, the Bible says, Surely he has borne our grief. Now, this is talking about Jesus and what he did on the cross. The Bible says, He bore, He carried your griefs and carried our sorrows. Hello? So, when you have sorrow and you say, Lord, turn my sorrow to joy, that's why God always refers you to the tree to the cross. Because that is where your sorrow was taken by Jesus, carried by Jesus. So, God is saying, Okay, you want me to change your sorrow into joy? Look at Jesus. He carried your sorrow for you. Hello? Are you with me this morning? And what you do with what God is showing to you will determine whether you have a change. So, if I say, yes, Jesus carried my grief, 
He carried my sorrow so that I can have joy. Lord, thank you for this. I believe it. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Now, it is not just seeing alone. Moses was shown a tree, but seeing a tree does not bring turn bitter water to sweet water, did he? What did he have to do? Take and put in the water. So, I want joy, I want healing, I want victory, I want deliverance. Jesus paid the price. Jesus made all available for me through his death on the cross. But listen to me, knowing that alone does not bring a change. Knowing that Jesus is the healer, knowing that Jesus took my infirmity and sicknesses in his own body on the tree does not bring healing. What brings healing is taking it. Now, how do you take it? That is where many miss it. Oh, I know God can do all things. That's good enough. But that doesn't change anything. You need to take the tree. You need to take that revelation. You need to make it personal. Oh, you need to know that, yes, Jesus died for my sin. I'm no longer a sinner. And you listen to what I'm talking about. You need to believe it. You need to begin to declare it and confess it until you see it in your life. So, taking the tree and putting it in your signature simply means seeing what Jesus has done and receiving it. How do you receive it? By believing it. If Jesus said, I carry your sorrow, see your sorrow being carried by Jesus. Believe it. If Jesus said, I took your sickness and infirmity, believe it that sickness has no legal right to stay in your body because someone has taken it for you. If Jesus says, I took your sin in my body, believe it that sin should not control your life anymore. Jesus must make a cause for you. Believe it that whatever they call family cause, Jesus took it from the cross so that you can have the blessing. So, I believe that I say, okay, Jesus, you took my cause, I receive your blessing. Jesus, you took my sickness, I receive your health. Jesus, you took my poverty, I receive your prosperity. Jesus, you carry my sorrow, I receive your joy. Now, how do I bring that into my life? See it, that's the first thing. But don't just see it, seize it by faith. Take it by faith and begin to declare, begin to confess it. By his stripes, I am healed. Jesus has carried my sorrow. Jesus, all my grief. Jesus has been made a for me that I may have the blessings of Abraham. Now, I begin to say, I begin to speak it, I begin to declare. Are you listening to me? I begin to change my mind to think like that. That's what we get changed. Not just seeing what Jesus has done on the cross. You need to see that. You need to take time. You need to go through the scripture and know that Jesus didn't die for his sin. He died for your own sin. I need to know that Jesus was an exchange for us. Everything is suffered. He suffered so that you wouldn't have to go through it. Do you know they stood him naked? He was disgraced. He was crucified in the whole world. Do you know why? So that you will not go through shame and disgrace in life. Do you know what it means to, to, to be someone with 39 strides? If you watch Passion of Christ, he did that for your healing. The Bible said the chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we are healed. So he did all that, he endured all that, so that I cannot, I may mean, not all my life endure pain and sickness. Alright? So if I have pain, I can say, no, 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 no. Jesus was beating with 39 stripes for my sake so that I can have healing. I said, I'm not going to take sickness, rather, I'm going to take healing. Because Jesus has taken my sickness. What are you doing? You are bringing the tree into your life to bring a change. You need to see the revelation of God's love on the cross. You need to see everything that Christ has done for you. He was stripped naked. He was, he was brutalized. They, they spat on him. They despised him. One of the soldiers smote him on the cheek. They did all that so that you will not go through that in life. So that my situation will not be smiting here and there. So that the enemy will not mock you, ridicule you, chastise you, destroy your life. That's my God. The Bible said he tasted death for everyone so that we might live to him. So I need to believe that. I need to check the Bible. I need to ask God, open my eyes, show me what Jesus did on the tree. Show me what Jesus did for me on the cross. Show me the price that he made. Show me the law. Show me the blessing that he made available. Show me the joy that he made available for me. And you need to take it. Believe it. Believe it. Begin to declare it. Begin to say it. Begin to work in it. When you are doing that, you are changing your mind. When you are doing that, you are setting God to work. I want to read a few more scriptures and then we pray. Now, turn your back with me now 
to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 22. Very quickly, you need to see the tree. You need to take the tree and bring it into your situation. See what Christ has done. Take it by faith. Begin to confess it. Begin to declare it. Begin to act according to that. Hallelujah. Isaiah 45, verse 22. Isaiah 45. God says, look to me and be saved. All you hands of the earth, for I am God. There is no order. Look to me. I need a change in life. God said, look, look, look. Look to me. Look to the cross. Look to what Jesus has done. Behold him. See it. See how much God loves you. That's what brings salvation. That's what brings healing. That's what brings a change into your life. Look to me and be saved. That's what God says. Hello? Look away from your situation. Do you know why many of us are stuck in life? It's because we do not look away from ourselves. We have not for once looked away from our situation. Are you with me this morning? You need to start looking away from your situation. Look away from what enemies are doing. Look away from whatever anybody is saying. What should you focus on? Focus on Jesus. Focus on God. Keep looking at what he has done for you. Don't look at your situation. Your situation will respond. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? God said, look to me and be safe. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Don't just see the three. God wants you to take it. God wants you to believe everything that he said Jesus did for you. He made Jesus a cause so that you might receive the blessing. Believe it. Believe it. Begin to confess it. You are not a failure. Begin to confess you are a success. Begin to confess it. You are not poor. You are rich. Through his poverty, he has made you rich. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. The Bible says, but we all, but we all with an unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being changed, being transformed, into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. As I keep looking unto Jesus, as I keep meditating on what Jesus has done, as I begin to see the revelation of God's love to me through Christ's death on the cross, as I begin to understand that Jesus paid the price so that I can succeed, so that I can have victory, so that I can have joy, so that I can have success, so that I can be fruitful, so that I can always have the peace of God in my life. The Bible says, as you begin to see, now listen to me, it will change your bitter water. Hallelujah. As you see it, as you begin to believe it, as you begin to declare it, as you begin to confess it, as you begin to say it, as you look away from your situation, you begin to say exactly what Jesus has done for you. Are you listening to me? Not what you are feeling. Not what people are saying. But what God has said. What God said Jesus did for you. God said Jesus took your cause. Don't say, oh, everybody in my family, they have marital cause. They always divorce. Their marriage don't last. Don't keep saying that. Jesus has been made a cause for you. Change your confession. Say, I am different. It's not going to be like that. Now begin to change it. Begin to, now as you begin to see what Jesus has done, don't just see it. Take it. How do you take it? Begin to declare it. Begin to say it. Now, the Bible says, you will have whatsoever you say. So if I'm speaking a change, I will have a change. Are you listening to me? Now, there is sorrow. There is a bitter water. I've had a taste of it. But don't go ahead and begin to tell people how bitter the water is. Hello? Will that change the water? No, it won't change. Many of us, that's what we do in our life. We look for people that will sympathize with us. And we tell people what we are going through, what we have gone through. And that's just the story. And we keep saying the same negative things over and over. And then we wonder why things have not changed. Your words have not changed. You create your world by words, by what you say. When you change your confession, the manifestation will change. Things will change. So God does not just want you to see what Jesus has done. God wants you to begin to say it. Don't say what the devil is saying to your ears. Are you listening to me? The devil might keep telling you, yes, you are, you are condemned. You are, you, are, you are a sinner. You are this. You are that. You, you, are, you are not good. God does not love you. That is a lie. God loves you. That's why he sent his son to die for you on the cross. God said, I love you with an everlasting love. 
Oh, the devil wants you to think that God has left you. No, God has not left you. The fact that you are tasting bitter water does not mean God has... God was with them, but yet they had a taste of bitter water. But God wants to show them how to change the bitter water to sweet water. No matter the bitter water you are tasting now, you can change it. God is for you. God is with you. If you look at the tree, if you see the tree, what Jesus has done, that is where God's love is revealed. That's where Jesus paid the price. Every good things of life that you want, that is where it comes from. Are you listening to me? Healing, deliverance, victory, source, it flows from his death on the cross. That is where he paid. That is where the exchange took place. That is where the cause was removed. That is where the sickness was taken away. That is where the devil was defeated. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? It all happened on the cross. And that is why God always points man to the cross. No matter what you ask God, God will point you to the cross show you a tree and God will say can you see it can you see what we are asking for can you see the healing can you see the blessing if you see it God said take it take it and when you take it it will show when Moses saw the tree and he took the tree and he dipped the tree in the water did the water remain the same talk to me no your life will remain the same your situation will remain the same if you see what Jesus has done and you take it by faith and you begin to declare it, and you begin to say it, and you begin to confess it, and you begin to walk like that. It's just a matter of time. People around you will say, wow, things are changing for you. Wow, we never thought you could get married again. We never thought that you, look at you, you can get this handsome guy, this caring, this loving guy. We never knew. We never knew you can still have a flourishing business like this. We never knew your children could be this successful and great. Why? Because you are looking at what Jesus has done. Because you are saying, not what people are doing, not what is happening in your family, but what Jesus said he has done for you. I want you to rise to your feet this morning. It is time to look at the tree. It is time. Take your attention away from whatever pains you are going to. Take your attention away from whatever anyone is doing to you. Focus it on Jesus. He said, look to me and be saved. That's what God says. Now, when you look to men, you will have disappointment. Are you, are you listening to me? When you keep looking at what somebody has done to you, many of all that, that's the mistake we make. This guy has hurt me. This guy has betrayed me. This guy has disappointed me. And so for the rest of our life, we keep thinking about him and what he has done. You are not helping yourself. That's why God says, look to me. Don't look at the person that left you. Don't look at the person that hurt you. Don't look at the person that betrayed you. Don't look at the way you are feeling. Don't look at your family. Don't look at what they are saying. Don't look at what people in your community are saying. Don't say, look to me. I love you. I died for you on the Lord. Look to me. I made the price for you. I made the blessing available. I defeated the devil for you. So look unto Jesus. That's what God is saying to you. You want to change in your life? Look unto Jesus. That is where he paid the price. That is where God's power is revealed. First Corinthians 1, 18. The Bible says the message of the cross is the power of God. Is the power of God. When you look unto the cross, you are connecting yourself with the source of power. And you listen to what I'm talking about. When you have a revelation of what Jesus has done, what are you doing to yourself? You are drawing God's power for a change in your life. This morning I want you to close your eyes. I don't know the bitter water you are tasting now, but listen to me. Look at the cross. This morning there could be a change. God can change it. But don't forget, God will not change it if you don't look at the tree. God will not change it if you don't take the tree. God will not change it if you don't look at Jesus. If you don't believe what Jesus has done for you, if you don't receive what Jesus has done, if you don't confess, if you don't believe what Jesus has done, this morning I want you to open your heart. In what area of your life you need a change, you need to tell the Lord it is time for a change. It is time for a change of life, change of condition, change of situation. It is time, Lord. I believe Jesus has paid the price. I believe Jesus died for me. I believe Jesus made me God's right to serve. I believe Jesus carried my sorrow. I believe Jesus took my infirmity and sicknesses. I believe Jesus took my cause. I believe Jesus released his blessing upon me through the cross. I believe Jesus gave me the victory over the devil through the cross. I believe Jesus did it all for me. I can have joy. I can have peace. You're going to say, the Lord, change this bitter water. It is time for a change. It is time for a change. And the Lord, Lord, things must not remain the same. I want you to say this after me in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's do it better. In the name of Jesus, I believe what Jesus has done on the cross. Come on, say, Lord, I believe what Jesus has done on the cross. He took my infirmities. 
He took my sicknesses so that I may have healing, so that I may have good health. He became a cause for me on the tree so that I can have blessings. He was stripped naked on the cross. He was disgraced. He was humiliated on the cross so that I may not be humiliated. So that I may not be disgraced. So that I may have honor. So that I may have glory. In the name of Jesus. I believe that. I receive this now. I receive healing now. I receive the blessing now. I receive the power now. Everything that Jesus brought. Through his death on the cross. Through his suffering on the cross. I take it now. Come on, say that I say, I take it now. I take my healing now. I take my joy now. I take my peace now. I take my success now. I take my breakthrough now. I take my strength now. I take the grace of God now. I take the blessings of God now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, today, I receive your power. And I release your power into the bitter water. In my life. In my family, let there be a change now. Come on, shout it out. Let there be a change. Every piece of water be changed now to a sweet water. Come on, shout it out. Every piece of water in the name of Jesus. Every piece of the spirit in the name of Jesus be changed now. Be changed now. Be changed now. Every situation that has not been shared. That has brought me pain. That has made me weak. In the name of Jesus. Begin to change now. I can hear your voice. Begin to change now. Begin to change now. I want to declare my situation is changing now. Come on, things are getting better for me. Say it louder. Things are getting better. If you believe in say it in the excitement, things are getting better. My life is getting better. I am going forward. I am going higher. Things are changing. Things are not even the same. I am going forward. I am having joy. I am having strength. I am having peace. I am having victory. I am having success. My children are succeeding in life. My children are moving forward. My business is moving forward. My relationship is getting better. Things are working for me. Oh, masakrande mo shetiriya. Liklande soprande mo shetiriya. The Lord says, as these people have spoken in my ear, so will I do to them. Jesus said, you will have whatsoever you say. Every word that you have declared today, every prophecy, every pronouncement, every declaration, I declare today as the servant of the Lord, that so shall it be in your life. In the name of Jesus, every bit of water, change to sweet water in the name of from this day forward, from this day forward, situation that have been stagnant for a while, wherever you have been stuck before, I declare that you are loose in the name of Jesus. You are the least in the name of Jesus. Things that have not worked well before, things that have not been working before, in your life, in your marriage, in your situation, in your finances, I command them to begin to work now in the name of Jesus. Yes, all the long time expectation. Things that I've been expecting for a long time, that have been held down, that have been held back, that have not come, every favor, every help, every surprise, every goodness, every breakthrough, whatsoever it is that I've been waiting for, I lose them to come to you now in the name of Jesus. Receive it now. I said, receive it now. The picture you're waiting for, receive it now. The joy, receive it now. The healing, receive it now. The breakthrough, receive it now. The deliverance, receive it now. Let somebody shout, I receive it. Come and stand and say, I receive it. Oh, thank you, Father. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you glory. Oh, thank you for the cross. 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 Lord, we bless you. We bless you. We worship you. Thank you, Lord, because we begin to enjoy everything that the cross brought to us. Everything that Jesus did on the cross. We begin to experience it in our life, in our family, in our church, in our community. We begin to experience it. 
salvation, healing, victory, deliverance, breakthrough, fruitfulness, joy, peace. We begin to experience it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And in we hope you have been challenged, encouraged, and motivated to become more like Christ by today's teaching. If you would like to find out more about Errands of Revival and get additional teachings and materials for your healthy, spiritual growth, visit our website today at www.eradsofrevival.org.uk Or if you would like to enroll at our School of Discipleship, visit our website www.theschoolofdiscipleship.org.uk This teaching was made possible by the prayers and generous free will offering donation and gifts from partners like you. You are welcome into partnership with us today. For information on how to become a partner, please call 1-868-292-9270 or 1-868-703-5572 or you can email us at info at erasofrevival.org.uk Thanks for listening.